We're about 200 miles east of Point Barrow, Alaska, 40 miles from the mainland, on an ice flow where crushing pressure ridges have stacked up to give a rugged, jagged face to the Arctic landscape. This is the home of the polar bear, the largest and one of the most dangerous animals to hunt in North America. Only 350 permits to hunt these prize trophies are given out each year. For Archer Fred Bear, it's his third attempt to take this Arctic trophy with his bow and arrow. With him are sportsman Burr Schmidt and fellow Michigander Bob Munger. and snow, through drifts and over frozen mounds, looks easy in these motor sleds that are driven by an eight horsepower gasoline motor. After several hours of travel in the sub-zero temperatures, the group gets a lift when it spots a giant ice formation in the distance. It resembles a skyscraper in a small town, but to the hunter, it means a good campsite. The giant crystal blue ice cube means a number of things to the hunter. A source of water from its salt-free ice, an obvious sturdy protection from freezing wind. But most important, as a campsite, the ice cube stands guard over a field of pressure ridges where the polar bear likes to roam as he searches for seal. Well, Fred, we made it. Huh? We made it. Where are you, sir? Fred? Huh? That is indeed the world's biggest ice cube. You like that, eh? Yes, sir. Isn't well, that a dandy? It's beautiful. You know, you're only looking at about one-seventh of it, too. The rest of it's underwater. This is an iceberg? Well, it's some kind of a hunk that came out of somewhere and wound up here in the storm. Say, Fred, that big lump of small stuff ice out there, you know, that stuff all yeah. heaved up. Yeah, that's pressure ridge. It's pressure ridge. Yeah, that's when... A big floating island of ice is blown in mm -hmm. and hits shore ice and it just piles it up. There's just a terrific it right up. It just grinds it all up and piles it up and piles. Ice and piles 50 feet high. Do uh, the bears like to hang out around those pressure ridges? Any reason? Yeah, they do, Burr. Uh, <clears throat> when you got a pressure ridge, sometimes I've seen them miles and miles and miles long. Uh -huh. And uh, they fall them. It's sort of a guideline, and uh, when you're hunting, it's a good way to get at them. You move, you move ahead and station yourself along the pressure ridge, and chances are the bear will walk right by you. Oh, Fred. Well, Fred. This, this looks, like, a, this looks, looks like an amphitheater when you're coming up here. Well, there's this ledge here. That, uh, we've got a crack going along here, but there's this ledge here. And uh, I figured we... I think it's going to hold. Yeah, I'm sure it'll hold. We put on some of the snow, and we can set our tents up right here. I think it'd be a beautiful spot. I think it's great, but doesn't that crack mean that this thing's about ready to drift out to sea or something? Well, no, no. I don't think it'd drift out for two, three days at least. You know, where I think it'd be better to put the tent up Fred. on the top there. Eh? Pretty deep, Brad. Isn't it pretty deep? Yeah, it's about seven feet deep. The ice? The snow. Uh, that'll, that'll hold us. Seven feet will hold us. I think we're to put the tents up there, Bear. How old do you suppose that piece of ice is? I haven't the slightest idea. Well, this is going to be home for the next few days, right? Eh? Yeah. Well, let's get our gear up here and, uh, and get going, huh? One of the first things to be unloaded from the sled is Fred Bear's archery target that's mounted on the face of the huge protective ice formation. Quickly, the two large double-enforced igloo-shaped tents go up, billowing somewhat in a stiff 15-knot wind. Spikes are driven into the crusty snow base on which the tents are erected. Inside the tents, Floors are covered with plywood and caribou skins to preserve what little warmth there is. Teamwork is essential on any Arctic hunting expedition. Each of the hunters digs into the frozen Arctic floor to carve and chip frozen snow blocks. These windbreaks are necessary to protect the tents from swirling gusts that erupt without warning. With temperatures down to 35 below zero, such activity enhances warmth and the hunters attend to their work like masons 
smoothing the snow blocks carefully and professionally. All this vigorous activity involved in building a camp in Alaska's wilderness is essential to provide some comfort to the hunters. Well, we got a nice, neat little home here, Brad. In the standing. I love it. Comfortable. Nice front porch. Protected from the wind. And one of the most beautiful, unspoiled views I've ever seen in my life. We can really do some living here. Yeah. Well, listen, nice. now that we got all the work done, Fred, I think it's time for a little relaxation. And relaxation to Fred Bear means his bow and arrow at any time, at any place, especially just before a polar bear hunt. You, you can't kill a bear with a tip like this, can you? Oh, no, that's a, that's a shooting at the target. That's, uh, we have, have the target tips? We have two kinds, one with a point and one with a What kind point. do you use for the... Uh... Let me have that one. Will you, Bob? Yeah, that's a the broadhead. That's a... Oh, I see. Hunting head. Got very sharp cutting edges in there. Well, that's the secret of the whole thing. Very sharp. You should be a knife. Ooh. That's the one that does it when you're hunting, huh? Fred Bear's powerful 65-pound bow will hurl the razor-sharp aluminum arrows. But here in prepping his bow, Fred takes careful aim at target discs. And it's a bullseye. Such practice hones the combination of accuracy and speed of delivery, most important to the archer. Beauty. Okay. okay. Well, I see you got your survival gear there. Yeah, I'll get her to flash down here. Always managed to find a good place to put that bow, don't you, That's Brad? a real nice place, sir. Uh, mm. Burr, I got a couple of rubbers keeping them bouncing around. Yeah. Good deal. Well, we about uh, ready there, uh, Bob? Just about. Bob's going to take the second car out of the garage, huh? Yeah, he's going to run that machine. Good deal. Each day, the hunt routine remained the same as Fred and Bob Munger would survey the area surrounding the camp for any signs of polar bear movement throughout the night. Their hunting area covered a radius of 60 miles from the camp. Each man gained a thorough knowledge of the sea of ice that surrounded them. Besides fresh signs of bear, they also sought out new pressure ridge formations or fresh breakup of ice. These open water areas are inhabited by seals, which are the main diet of the polar bear. For 25 days, through Arctic whiteouts, storms, and severe cold, the routine remained unchanged until they discovered their first fresh bear sign. For Fred Bear, this has been his third trip to take the trophy polar bear. The first two unsuccessful, as each time an enraged bear charged, forcing the guide to use a rifle. For in bow hunting, unlike the long-range hunting afforded by the modern weapon, you must stop to within 20 to 30 yards of the bear before being able to make the fatal shot. In archery, the stock is truly the most important aspect of the hunt. You see him up there? He's working around the corner here. Maybe we can head him off. Right away. 
wait here a minute. Is he okay? You see him? Just over that one right there. Yeah. Okay. bullseye has brought him a prize trophy, one of the most sought after in North America. An exhausting 25-day battle with severe cold comes to a close on an Arctic ice floe in Alaska. <laughs> 